Hi folks and welcome to the Radio Shack. I'm glad you could uh, visit today. In fact, I knew you were coming, so I cleaned off the desk. There was a lot of stuff here and I dusted off the equipment because I wanted to make sure it looked okay for you. So uh, all that mess will come, come back again as soon as you've left. Anyway, thanks for, uh, for uh, joining us and uh, let's have a look at what we've got on the desk here. So there you can see the layout of the shack as it stands at the moment. It does change around a little bit at times, but uh, this is where it is today. You'll see on the top shelf there a pile of power supplies. I, I like lots of power supplies and they're all being used in one form or another. And there's also a, a monitor there, a Samsung uh, monitor, which I don't use a lot. When it first came into the shack, it was working off a, a very poor switch mode power supply and uh, it was making a heck of a lot of noise on the short wave bands. So I've got that now connected up to one of the power supplies. So the monitor actually is connected through to the laptop computer and uh, we use it for uh, some programs there. And the second shelf, you can see uh, some radios and the speaker and uh, the antenna coupler. And in the bottom shelf, we've got uh, mainly radios and the new mixing board. So let's go through these one at a time. I love power supplies and I've got five of them, I think, at last count. Uh, so here's two of them here. The little Panther uh, power supply is uh, just has a 2 amp max and it's 13.8 volts uh, regulated supply. So it's a nice quiet power supply and uh, that powers the BHI noise cancelling unit and the bigger Manson power supply has been excellent uh, that's a 33 amp output and uh, although it's a switch mode power supply it's very very quiet and it's giving no interference on the short wave bands at all here's two more power supplies in the shack the solid state uh, power supply right at the top is a rebuild um, I managed to blow that up many many years ago and uh, we rebuilt the uh, supply uh, so it's giving out about uh, two and a half amps and uh, it's running at 13.8 uh, volts and it works very reliably and it's very quiet the one below is another big power supply there uh, variable so it goes from 3 to 15 volts uh, and it also it's up to around about 25 or 30 amps so it's really got a nice uh, nice output there. It also has some additional output uh, points there uh, for um, for 12 volt supply at um, one to two amps. The only problem with that big big power supply is that it's got a very noisy fan on it, so I don't like using it unless I really have to. Another recent addition to the shack is this diamond power supply, the GSV3000, which is uh, a beautiful power supply, uh, very quiet, has a fan that runs all the time but it's not very noisy, it has a maximum current output as you can see there of 34 amps and it's got some 6 amp outputs there as well as the 34 amp output. It's a variable power supply and it also has a point for a, a cigarette lighter connection as well on the right hand side there. A very nice power supply, it's working very well for us. For many years now, MFJ have produced what they call a deluxe noise cancelling signal enhancer, which we usually know as an MFJ 1026, that's the model number. It can be quite effective on cancelling out certain types of noise and it does it with a 180 degree phase shift. So you have two antennas, you've got your main antenna that you're listening on to and you've got a reference antenna which should be located somewhere near the main antenna uh, and uh, in the same direction so that it's picking up the same type of noise. This unit can be a bit fiddly to learn to use. Uh, once you get the hang of it, it's quite good. It doesn't work for all sorts of noise, but it does a pretty good job. I don't use it much these days because I'm using a, the ASU FTDX3000 transceiver, which has lots of facilities in there for cancelling out noise. But I do use it on some of the older receivers and uh, this unit can be quite effective for that. 
Yaesu many years ago put out a VX5R FM transceiver and it was for uh, 2 meters and 70 centimeters. And it also has a, uh, a range for um, uh, the air band and for the shortwave and medium wave bands. It's not very effective on any of those bands, but it is very good as a simple handheld uh, transceiver on VHF and UHF. Recently, I wrote about the universal antenna coupler from Tokyo High Power Labs. I uh, did a blog post there and uh, this unit has been a part of my DXing hobby for decades now and it's uh, really my main antenna coupler that I use every day. What I suggest you do is uh, if you have a look at the blog post you'll, you'll get a lot more detail on this. And we also lift the cover off it and uh, have a look inside it. The Alpha Delta coax switch that I've got here in the shack has been a useful addition. I've got four HF antennas that are regularly in use and I can switch between each one very easily as well as switching it through to each of the radios. I've uh, done a review of this uh, piece of equipment and uh, I'll put the details down there on the screen for you so that you can uh, have a look at that but it's a really useful little unit. The monitor that I use currently is a Boss MA12. It's about 35 years old and uh, it still works very well. So it's a powered monitor uh, with uh, treble and bass controls and volume control and uh, has a few inputs at the back. Now it's only a small monitor but it really puts out really quite a nice compact sound. Uh, I am looking around at replacing it, um, there's a couple of options and so um, that might be replaced in the near future. But at the moment it's working fine. It gets a little bit buzzy at times there, a little, and I think it might have some uh, uh, leaky uh, capacitors in there which are causing a little bit of noise. But it's still working pretty well. The Kenwood R5000 is a rig I picked up in early 2016 at a ham fest and uh, it was uh, pretty beaten about when I got it too and uh, wasn't working that well so I did a, a little bit of work on it and uh, it's working quite well at the moment in fact I have written about this in the blog uh, with a number of videos and you can uh, check that out but it's a great little rig it's uh, still working okay I put a new filter in a narrower filter and that has made quite a deal of difference but it's a very nice rig uh, this one only operates on the shortwave bands, it doesn't operate on medium wave or long wave as they do in some other parts of the world. So this is really a shortwave only unit. The Yaesu FRG100 is a receiver that I've had probably for about 15 years now. Because it's not a huge uh, radio, it's one that I was able to take, it, uh, take out on the expeditions and uh, it worked really well from that point of view. So it is a, a radio that sits on the desk here, but as I say, it works quite well as a, um, as a large uh, portable receiver as well. The Kenwood TS2000 is a really good little rig. It uh, is probably about 15 years old, and it was one of the first generation of TS2000s that, uh, that uh, came out onto the market. It's one of those rigs that is uh, just about has everything, HF, VHF and UHF. So it covers 160 metres uh, right up to the 23 centimetre band. So it's the HF and then uh, 6 metres, 2 metres, 70 centimetres and the uh, 23 centimetre band. So it's really a very, very comprehensive uh, rig. I use it quite a bit these days uh, for VHF and UHF, so on 2 metres and 70 centimetres uh, I listen or make the occasional contact there. But it was my main shortwave listening rig and my main amateur rig for many years and it's uh, never given me any trouble at all. The newest rig in the shack is the FT DX3000 from Yaesu and I bought this rig several years ago. It is a fabulous receiver in this rig, it's a very quiet receiver and a low uh, noise floor there, which uh, means that you can really hear some weak signals 
without too much interference at all. So it's got lots of facilities on it for adjusting the uh, reception of, of signals in terms of contour, IF, shift and width, notch filters, a very, very good digital uh, noise reduction and lots of other facilities in it. And as a transmitting rig, it works absolutely fine as well. So it's a rig that I probably spend most of my time in terms of uh, DXing when I'm here at home. I bought this noise eliminating inline module from BHI. I don't use it so much these days because I've now got the Yaesu FT DX3000, which uh, has a beautiful receiver in it and it's very effective at, at uh, eliminating noise. So uh, this is not used quite as much, but I still keep it in circuit for when I'm using the uh, Kenwood TS2000 or even the Kenwood R5000 receiver. The latest addition to the shack is the Behringer Zenex 802, the Q802 USB mixer. This has been a very handy little addition to the, uh, to the shack and it allows me to take all the audio from the various receivers and transceivers, put them into the, this board and then send all the audio out to the one external speaker which is the, the BOSS uh, powered monitor. In addition you can control the EQ so it's got highs, mids and lows here and you can get uh, quite some control over that which can help with intelligibility of signals uh, that you're listening to particularly if there's a bit of noise or there's interference or if the signal is just not that good in the audio quality. So I really like using this uh, this rig it's uh, taken me a while to uh, to get used to it and we're still playing around with it and uh, making some alterations as well but I think it has really made quite a difference to the way we control all the audio in the shack. Another recent addition to the shack is the Texan PL680 receiver. Uh, I've done some reviews and I've, I've actually spent quite a bit of time talking about this receiver in the blog and uh, this is one that I don't use much here at the shack but I certainly use it a lot when I'm out on the road or out in the bush or by the seaside uh, it's a really effective little unit it does require a, a good antenna to uh, to be really effective and so I reel out a, a roll of wire there to uh, to uh, make that make that happen but it's a very good uh, very good rig so it's one that I use not in the shack but when I'm out on the expeditions highly recommended so there you have it. That gives you a bit of an idea of what we've currently got in the shack at the moment. I won't take you around the back of the desk because that's an absolute rat's nest around there. Uh, there's wires everywhere. I'll have to clean that up for your next visit. Thanks for joining us and uh, 73s and uh, good DX to you all.